Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we'll be doing an on-demand independent test of Sophos Home Premium. This is their highest tier security product for home users and it mirrors, as I understand, the internals of their enterprise solution. So you are getting the same level of security. There's also a free version of this product, which you can check out. It has some limitations in terms of the ransomware protection, some of the advanced real-time protection capabilities, but I'm assuming it's going to have the same basic antivirus engine. It looks like there's some changes to the UI. As you can see, we've got this nice uh, blue sidebar that I don't think was there in previous versions. Not an awful lot of functionality, but you can see the different modules that are active. And if you want to change any of these settings, you have to rely on the cloud console, of course. And to do that, you can click on dashboard. This is going to lock you into your cloud interface. And once you're here, you can change all the settings. On the device itself, I think you're limited to just viewing the settings. And some people may not like that. It is definitely a matter of preference, but the web console is going to come in handy if you're managing multiple devices. As you know, on the PC security channel, we don't simply look at security products. We actually test them against malware. So that is exactly what we're going to do with this product as well. Before that, I just want to go through all the different components very briefly. So under protection, we have real-time protection, malicious traffic detection, AI slash machine learning, got exploit mitigation, protected applications, risk reduction. We've also got ransomware protection, which says it stops ransomware from encrypting your files. This is something we'll test specifically later on since it's an area of interest. When it comes to the web, there's obviously web protection, download reputation. These are fairly standard features. And there's also a web filtering setting that allows you to block specific websites. I guess this is carrying over from the enterprise functionality. So you can use it as parental control and block specific categories of websites beyond just blocking malware and phishing. There's also webcam and identity protection to some extent if you have the premium version. Now, one of the new features that's been introduced with this version is the addition of this mobile app that actually allows you to see all your system activity as well as change protection settings directly from your smartphone. You might find this strange that so you can do this from your smartphone but not from the product UI on your computer. But that is in part a security feature because an attacker who gains access to your computer through say a remote access tool can necessarily turn off the AV. So in part, I like this approach. But now we're going to begin with our test. So as usual, we're going to use our automation script Malex to conduct this. We have over 1000 items in our shared folder here. We're going to emulate a network-based attack and launch all of these samples on the host system with the help of our automation tools. So in order to do that, we're just gonna quickly navigate to our shared location. Everything looks good to go, so let's get testing. As you can see, the test is underway. Files are being checked and they are being blocked by Sophos. So we're already getting notifications that threats are being removed. Now I'll also open Task Manager so you can take a look at the resource usage as the test is being carried out. Now, of course, this is going to take some time. So we're going to use the power of editing to speed it up.
The test is now complete. We successfully executed 1,054 files and all of them were blocked. So that is a final proactive detection of 100%, about as good of a result as you could hope for. The CPU usage was hovering around 10% and it took uh, only 11.5 minutes. So that's really good. Now the alerting was also very interesting. So when the first few threats came up, obviously it gave us the names of the threats and the alert did pop up on the desktop. But after a while, we get this notification, which says threat notifications paused because a large number of threats were detected. This is a very clean way of doing it. I've seen in most other cases, we just get swarmed with notifications. Sometimes you have to restart the system because otherwise you're just getting the notification back to back to back. So it's really nice to see that attention to detail here. Now we're gonna move on to the second part of the test. We're, we're going to try some of the most infamous ransomware variants from the last five years. These are legacy threats, but at the same time, what we're going to do is disable the malware protection. Essentially, simulate a situation where a malware is able to bypass this and behaves in the same way as typical ransomware would. The question is, is the ransomware protection capability on its own going to be able to prevent the encryption activity from happening? We will leave this turned on and we'll also have uh, the protect from remotely run ransomware setting enabled. And now we'll grab our samples. So to kick things off, we're just going to try um, the first one, echo.ransom. We're going to execute it on our test system. Basically, we're assuming a bypass of the malware protection component here. And now we wait. And within a few seconds, we get this notification that the attack was intercepted and the file was terminated to prevent the execution of malicious code. So that is good to see. Now we'll take a look at our files and uh, check if they were affected. And that is not the case. Now, it did create its own files, but it wasn't able to, as I understand, delete our data. So as you can see, if you can read this, your data is safe. We'll check our pictures and it looks like uh, same result there. Now we're going to try another variant. So we're going to try Black Claw. This is a more recent one, one I've also made a dedicated video about. If you're interested, that's part of the Meet Malware series. We're going to try running this as well. And again, we get a notification that an attack was intercepted. Service host one, I believe that's the process it used to encrypt the data was terminated to prevent execution of malicious code. If we go back and look at the malware, it has now deleted itself, I believe. And while it has created the ransom node, our files are totally fine. I don't see any modifications. So we're good to go on that. So again, great result. Now we're going to try, we'll try another one that's very recent. So we'll go with Wasted Locker since it was part of a recent attack. Try this out. Once again, we execute and wait. And it seems in this case, it was able to bypass the ransomware protection components. So if we take a look at our pictures, it does seem like they are encrypted. I'll just make sure by opening one of these files. And we were right. So the ransomware protection component by itself isn't bulletproof. And I think that's an area of improvement here. Now, there are definitely other layers like exploit mitigation that could block attacks depending on the attack vector, but it's definitely very interesting to see that we were able to 
get around the behavioral ransomware protection. It did do quite well in the first two samples where the encryption activity was blocked and our files weren't modified, but that didn't happen in the case of Wasted Locker. Now we're going to talk very briefly about false positives. So I have noticed a few false positives with this in terms of uh, detecting potentially unwanted programs in the sys internal suite. But at that point, it's just a question of what you would like to call that classification. I don't think it's technically wrong to say that something that can launch applications with really elevated privileges is a potentially unwanted program. But I haven't noticed any behavioral false positives that would really get in your way when it comes to running other applications. Typically, if there's no false positive from the scanner, you don't get a false positive on behavior. The product is also extremely automated and easy to manage. UI on the system is very minimalistic, if that is something you like. And I think it's also worth mentioning that when it comes to the malware protection component, it has been consistently getting 100% scores. So there you have it. That's Sophos Home Premium for you. If you would like to check out this product, please use the link in the description. It is an affiliate link, so it helps support our testing. We covered various aspects, so I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the PC Security channel, because hey, we're cybersecurity for everyone. If you'd like to work with us, check out our website, thepcsecuritychannel.com. This is Leo. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.